Are you dimming your light? I'm Ann Margaret with Rays of Vibration. Join me weekly for these talks on the weekends. And today we're discussing how we put the dimmer on our own radiance. I wore my sun and yellow because these are colors. These are things that we can think of immediately to help raise our vibration in more of an alignment with our soul, with the expression of our soul. So I'm going to start today with a little story to tell you about uh, something I just came across yesterday from the year 2000 seems so long ago, doesn't it? 20 years ago. And then I'll teach you three tools or three ways to recognize that you're dimming. You've got the dimmer switch on and then a few tools how to blast it out forever. It's going to come back. We're human, right? So we're, we're going to fall into our old patterns and that kind of thing. But these tools will help you get out of that shrinking or or kind of wallowing or fear or anything that contributes to dimming your own light. So let me actually talk about the first, the three ways that we actually dim our light. Then I'll tell you the story and then we'll go into the tools. So the three ways we dim our lights, we, we dim our light with thoughts about ourselves, things that we, we uh, have a low self-esteem about or that we question about our own sense of power or self-expression. We don't allow ourselves the space to be human or to be great at what we're great at. So different thoughts about us, one way to dim our light. Number two, thoughts about others. Maybe somebody's wronged you, so you waste your energy, you waste your vibration and your radiance on anger or frustration or the loop of just feeling like, oh my gosh, like this needs to be uh, there needs to be justice in this situation, or this isn't fair, or fear of what they're going to say about you. That's a big one. The third way that we dim our light is our relationship to the universe, to God, to our own faith. Fearing that things aren't going to work out, so we don't allow our own essence to come forward. We'll kind of shrink with this pretense that we are in control, which we're not. There's only so much that we can control. But this fear and this uh, faithless existence of really... Uh, that things aren't going to work out for you. That's another way because then you start going down that fear spiral and then how can your radiance emerge? Okay, so those are the three very basic ways. Thoughts about yourself, thoughts about other people, and then fear or lack of faith in God or the universe. Okay, however you relate to that energy. So yesterday I was doing some paper cleaning out and clearing out of old files and I came across this. You're not going to know what this is until I tell you, but what this is, it was called The Girl with the Weight of the World in Her Hands. It was a Christmas pageant that I wrote and directed for 40 kids in 2000, and this was on the Upper East Side of Manhattan in New York City. I was given the task of directing a Christmas pageant for a church on the Upper East Side for 40 kids, ranging from ages 5 to 17. Now. I always jump in before I think about things and I leap before I look and I thought, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. Let's do this. Sounds like fun. And then I was like, oh my God, how am I going to get 40 kids, teenagers invested in something like a Christmas pageant that they've done every year since they were five. They've seen every year. And I thought, you know what, maybe I'll write a new one. <laughs> and so I took the traditional Christmas story and I paralleled a story of from today's modern time of of a woman who's pregnant and she's got nowhere to go uh, to have her baby. And so I won't go into the full story of the Christmas pageant, but what was really miraculous about that was I took a risk and I thought, you know what, I'm going to write this Christmas pageant. I took some, some liberties with the modern story, as you have to do, obviously, comparing it to the, the story of, of Jesus being born. And I thought, okay, what do I do? And I, I wove in modern music and to get the teenagers excited about it because I really wanted them not just to dredge through it, but to get excited and allow their own essence to really shine forth. And so I thought, you know what, a couple of the girls were hip hop dancers and I thought, okay, so one of the gifts that they're going to give that, you know, so they were, they were, um, uh, couple of the magi. And so one of their gifts for the child was a dance for the new baby. And so they danced this hip hop dance. Can you imagine it was this 
pretty conservative church on the Upper East Side, but I thought, you know what, this might be a really great way to get these kids connected with the beauty of this story in their own way. Whew. So I was actually incredibly proud of every facet of this production. I couldn't believe the kids and how they gave to this uh, this production and kind of went with me and trusted me as my little 23-year-old director self. I, I couldn't get over it. And all of the kids loved it. They sang their hearts out. They danced their hearts out. And I knew I took a risk, but I thought, you know what? I feel like it paid off in how I measured the results. So one of the things about when we let our own light shine and trust our own our own radiance and go for it one of the things that is almost guaranteed is rejection judgment and criticism and while i think almost all the parents and all the people involved were very excited about uh, the event and then how it went off and their kids excitement and investment in telling not only this ancient beautiful story that's the foundation of Christianity but also paralleling it to now and how we can have more compassion in our lives and look out for people in the world I had a pretty overwhelmingly positive ex ex response but you know what's coming right oh, the head of the church the pastor of the church came up to me afterwards and said only these three words. He said, that was interesting. And he looked away and I thought, oh my gosh, I totally failed him. I totally failed. He trusted me to do this and I failed him. And then I said, okay, hold on, wait, 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 wait. And I was a little devastated. It wasn't like, hold on immediately. Like I was like, Ooh, and it was like the wind was out of my sails. I immediately deflated, but then I saw the looks on the kids' faces around me, and I, I felt the joy that I felt. And and I really, there's only one, one entity I answer to, and that's to God. That's to the universe. If that's how you connect to that, or your own uh, inner guidance. Um, your conscience, whatever that is for you. And I thought, you know what, what you did here was important today. And I share that story with you because so many times our fear of what other people are going to say is going to get in the way. And it's usually just one or two or three or four or five, whoever, however many. It's a tiny, tiny percentage of the minority. Tiny percent. It's such a minority compared to the people that will benefit from you allowing your own essence to shine. So... Let's talk about these three things. So thoughts about yourself. Okay, make sure that you're in alignment with your soul's purpose. Anything you're, you're saying to dim that switch, notice it. And the tool here is to recognize that immediately. The way that you get out of those negative thoughts about yourself is inc like right away, immediately say, what's one thing I can be proud of? Think about a past success. You are now living a dream life that you before imagined. There is something in your life, maybe it's finding your partner, maybe it's growing up to be an adult. Didn't we always want to be an adult? What were we thinking? Right? But it's actually a, a pretty incredible opportunity to be in this adult body and to create and have the freedom that we do now. So if that was the goal, you're living that now. So immediately when you have a negative thought about yourself, think about one thing you can be really proud of, be really grateful for that you now are living that you weren't before, okay? Thoughts about others. Okay, so great advice I've heard throughout my life by many teachers is other people's opinion of you, do you know the answer? Is none of your business. It's none of your business. Guys, this can be the very thing that keeps you from bringing your unique gift to the world that we are waiting for collectively. Think about some of your heroes or the people that defied all the odds. Everybody, you know, somebody thought one time the world was flat. It took a lot of courage for people throughout history to say, enough, this is not the way it is. This is what I want to bring my gift to the world or whatever, whatever outside of the box way of thinking that was. Okay. So other people's remember that mantra when you start thinking about, Oh my God, what are they going to think of me? And, and then you start shrinking in the light and the dimmer starts happening. Remember, Oh, you know what? That's none of my business. Whether they think I'm great or whether they think I'm horrible and a fraud, it doesn't 
matter. It's none of your business. You know why? Because our thoughts about other people are our own projections. Remember that in your life. When you're starting to get all judgy, as we all do at some point, right? When we're judging other people, we have to recognize that that's a projection through our own filter. Okay? So what other people think has nothing to do with you. The third thing is that faith. That faith, when we lose our faith in other circumstances, the world, things aren't working out the way that I thought they would. Things are going awry. Remember that every single thing, and this is a choice. This is not the truth because none of us can prove that, right? None of us can prove these kind of esoteric principles. That everything that is happening is happening for a purpose to help me grow and radiate my brilliance even more. You start thinking about that when you meet adversity, you have a completely different response. Yes, maybe you're victimized by something in the moment. We all experience trauma, every single one of us, and we're all doing the best we can with what we have. But in the face of those circumstances, if you start thinking thoughts like, oh, it's just not meant for me, I'm not, this is, you know, things aren't opening up as I wish they would have, or forget that, I almost said another word, forget that. If you're looking at your life like it's victimizing you, you will never learn and use those tools of adversity to make you stronger, like lifting the weight in the gym. It's lifting the weight so that your soul can get stronger and more fearless in shining brightly. Okay? Those three tools, when you're thinking about your self-limiting thoughts, you know what to do, right? Think about something you're proud of. When you're thinking about or fearing about what other people are thinking about you, it's none of my business what other people think about me. I'm not letting anyone else in this world come before what I have put on this earth to do, what God has created me to do, or how I'm here, what my soul can give to the world, all right? And then the faith, remembering that life is happening for you, not to you. All right, let's pick an archetype for today. Drum roll, healer. <laughs> it's a beautiful archetype. The healer and the archetype says, the light attributes are passion to serve others by repairing the body, mind, and spirit. Ability to help transform pain into healing. That's exactly what we're talking about today. It's a perfect card for us. It's being the alchemist, the soul alchemist of your life. Stop suffering through this human journey, guys. It's such a waste. It's such a gift to be here. Know anybody who's gone through losing somebody or being face to face with their own mortality. It's such a gift to be alive, guys. And it is so critical to be the alchemist and to recognize that divine gift that you have to turn that pain and learn from it into pleasure, into radiance, into your own unique gift to the world. The shadow attribute of that archetype is taking advantage of those who need help, failing to care for oneself. Self-care, critical. Very, very good, and not taking advantage of others. We don't know what it's like to be in each other's shoes, right? And no one knows what it's like to be in ours. Watch last week's talk on anger. It might be very helpful if you're stuck in that pattern and that cycle. All right. Drum roll for the, arch for the goddess. Ooh, lovely. Freya. Freya is an awesome goddess. I'll put the picture of this in the notes, as well as the oil that I use called Motivate to help me get back on track and, and just let all the other doubts go. I put a uh, link in the notes for today. So Freya, bold, unleash your adventurous side. Take risks and be daring. Oh my God, so great that we pulled this for today. Take risks, be daring, go outside the box. In order to let your own light shine, you have to get outside of the box you've been living in, outside of the thought patterns that have been keeping you small, outside of what other, th other people deem acceptable or the right way. You have to listen to that still small voice within or that very booming voice that we get sometimes by as we're guided by the higher seeing, higher unseen forces in our lives. So take risks today. What kind of risk can you take this weekend to really allow your own light to shine? All right, guys, I love you so much. I'm Ann Margaret with Raise the Vibration. Join me next week. And until next time, keep raising the vibration. Bye, guys.